We're live streaming. I'm gonna wait a few minutes. Chill out here for a moment. If you're joining, let me know if you can hear uh, hear uh, other people talking in the other room, and I'll tell them to I'll tell them to chill out. Mm -hmm. Probably give everyone to like one, one hundred two, one hundred three. Make sure I got all the right settings going on here. There we go. Perfect. Good. Make sure I can share my screen. Okay. All right, you know what? I said I was going to wait till like 1, 102, 103, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start rolling into it. So what I'm going to do is share my screen here and I'm going to share a PDF uh, so that it doesn't take up the entire my entire screen and I can see individuals who who might be commenting on here as well. So let's go ahead and share that. Perfect. And if you can't see it, just let me know. Post to comments, post to, well, let me see if we've got it on the, uh, there we go. I can see it on my, my live thing here. So let's see. Should be able to pull up comments here. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, let's get into it. Let's talk about, um, before we get into all of this, uh, you know, why, uh, you know, Facebook Lives here? Well, we are, one of our main goals here is to help individuals, help individuals who may or may not even be able to take advantage of our services. And what does that look like? It may look like just sharing information, um, sharing information. And if it resonates with you and it helps with your goals or otherwise, or if you want to reach out to us and work with us, then then that's perfect. But Again, the goal is to uh, to expand our reach into the community and help. So we get this a lot. And how are we picking topics? One is upon request. So if you have any topics, you can feel free to email me, Brandon at CrossFitSouthBend.com. Um, yeah, or you know, submit them when I put uh, when I when I put the requests here, which I will do occasionally now in our group. So let's talk about building muscle though. Today we will talk about strength versus hypertrophy, uh, benefits of building muscle, what's happening, uh, you know, on a, on a basic level there, uh, training mechanisms, considerations of building muscle, supporting mechanisms of building muscle, and then how does X affect muscle growth? And that's sleep and carbs and fat and protein and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get right into it. Mm. Strength versus hypertrophy. Uh, what what is the uh, what are the difference here? So strength is the ability to well to increase your ability to create a, a max contraction, uh, to overcome an external load, to increase your back squat one rep max, your bench press one rep max. Right. Um, principles of strength. Recovery, recovery, recovery. Uh, less very often winds up being more when it comes to strength work. Um, you want to honor the strength life cycle. And that is to say that individuals should, if they're trying to reach towards their potential, develop good efficiency in motor control first before they introduce lighter loads for longer and higher repetitions, more density there into moderate repetitions, moderate loads, which is strength endurance into max contractions, okay? Uh, and that's maybe a talk for another time, just talking about strength. Now, hypertrophy to increase muscle size. Um, principles of that are 
volume, volume, volume. I imagine a body part split. That's very often when you're programming it, you're not thinking um, pattern or lift based. You're thinking body part split uh, when you're programming this stuff. And you, on the other side of things, you want to create an anabolic environment. So a physiological state that is conducive to building and repairing muscle tissue. Uh, one, if the goal is building muscle, one shouldn't exist without the other. Uh, good quality resistance training along with that physiological state. And as a side note, muscle size can influence strength, but muscle strength doesn't always predict size. This means that somebody with a larger muscles, big people may not be able to necessarily lift more than a person with smaller muscles. So there's a lot of factors that contribute to strength beyond like muscle mass and size. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just keep rolling along. Well, what are the benefits? Benefits of building muscle beyond the obvious aesthetics of it, right? Um, it's a metabolism booster. More muscle equal a uh, higher RMR, uh, resting metabolic rate. Uh, you have a bigger car, bigger engine. It burns more fuel when it's at rest. So when we put people on an in-body, the higher your lean body mass, the higher the basal metabolic rate or the calories you kind of just burn, you know, being semi at rest, right? Uh, two, it improves the your functional strength, your quality of life. You can get out and go do the things you want to be able to do uh, without being hindered, really. Paddleboard, bike, you know, go enjoy what life has to offer. But not only that, just your day-to-day, -day, right? Carrying groceries, going upstairs, keeping up with your kids, that kind of stuff. Um, enhancing bone density, you know, building muscle helps strengthen bones, reduce risk of osteoporosis. Uh, resilience, uh, reduced pain, risk of injury, uh, slip and fall accidents, uh, things like that. Like you're, you're a little bit more resilient of a human. Uh, aiding in blood sugar control. So it can help uh, regulate glucose levels, which again is crucial for preventing or managing diabetes, right? Or daily energy just in general. Uh, boost confidence and self-esteem. You know, there's a mental aspect too. Building muscle can make people not only stronger, but feel stronger uh, and mentally stronger confidence. You, you know what you're capable of and what you're not capable of. And also the uh, indirect benefits of just challenge. Uh, resistance training can be really challenging and that mental resilience does carry over into life and other tasks, the tools that you get along with that. Um, yeah, indirect benefits, you know, training releases endorphins. It can help with sleep quality, that kind of stuff. Independence, uh, maintaining as much muscle mass as possible can help keep you more independent as you age. You have better balance and coordination from developing motor control and so on and so forth going through that life cycle. And what's happening here? Um, I promise I would keep this like really simple. Um, that's not the goal isn't to like get get super sciencey. Um, but you essentially are, you know, breaking down, you are destroying muscle fiber and you're regenerating it, remodeling it, right? So muscle stress, we need a stressor, uh, catabolism, uh, muscle fiber, micro tears, any strenuous exercise like that can cause microscopic damage. And then from there, you have an inflammatory response or repair response. So special cells start repairing them. Uh, and then you go into anabolism. So muscle protein synthesis. So using amino acids and all of these resources that hopefully you have in your, in your nutrition to patch up and reinforce the phrase and that, that rope that you just tore. And then you have adaptation and growth from there. A lot of stuff that happens in between with hormones and immune system and, and stuff like that. Training mechanisms. I feel like this is a little bit more relevant to most people. Um, you have mechanical tension like what well, actually let's zoom back out for a second when you're designing a training program it should include some of these things uh one is mechanical tension like think four sets of five repetitions of a bench press rest two to three minutes okay and that five repetitions should be tough when you perform resistance work it creates tension in the muscles. That signals the muscle to grow stronger. 
you do get a neuromuscular adaptation. The more you train, the better your nervous system gets at activating the right muscles. So beginners need a lot of practice with that to light that light bulb up. Um, the second here is muscle damage. Think a, we'll go with the, we'll keep with the bench press kind of theme here. Think three sets of 10 repetitions of a dumbbell bench press set. Two down, zero at the bottom, fast up, one at the top. This is the microscopic damage, right? Especially with like new or intense work around that time under tension, like 40 seconds, 30 to 40 seconds time under tension. Um, yeah, that you need something to adapt to over time with this stuff. But yeah, that's that's essentially the range that that helps with this. Now, it doesn't not happen at higher repetitions or lower repetitions, but that's generally like the bubble that you're in there. Um, third is metabolic stress. So uh, let's let's keep with the the bench. So imagine imagine mechanical tension. You did four sets of five repetitions of a bench press, and then muscle damage. You did three to four sets of maybe a 45 degree incline dumbbell bench press and then metabolic stress. Let's say you found a tough 30. Let's, let's keep it with triceps. Keep a find a tough 30 on a skull crusher, tricep press movement, rest 30 seconds, perform max reps at that weight for three more sets, maybe rest 30 seconds in between. So that, that pump, that burn, that metabolic stress and the buildup of metabolites that triggers the body to increase muscle fiber size. And then you need progressive overload. The demands have to increase over time. Heavier weight, more reps, different exercises, um, you know, so on and so forth. What considerations go into muscle building? Well, your capabilities. Like, what can you do right now? What can you express? Meaning, um, I can, you, you, see, you ever see somebody bench and it's kind of wobbling all over the place. It's not, that's not expression of the movement. That's still in motor control and practice, right? Uh, you get in, you can hit a moderate, de decent load down, up. It's nice and smooth. That is the, this expression where you feel as though you need the rest. If you can't hit a heavy five on a bench press or a back squat and need two minutes to rest uh, before repeating it again, you probably aren't expressing it enough, okay? Your central nervous system can't light up enough to need it uh, or need the recovery from there. So yeah, and that's, you know, where are you at in the, the strength continuum? What limitations do you have, uh, whether that's injury or otherwise? And that's where you start. Uh, this is where exercise selection comes into play and encompasses some of the other things, you know, you'll chat about, but you start with what you're capable of and move forward from there. Trading age, you know, what you need at each stage is different, a novice and an intermediate and advanced. And I threw in some examples we'll get into at the end. Um, and this is actually, this next thing is what spurred this entire Facebook live is biological age. Biological age matters when you're building muscle. Um, so I'm going to expand on this one a little bit more. There are hormone changes that shift with age. Uh, muscle protein synthesis tends to decline with age. Muscle fiber type, there's like sometimes a reduction of type two muscle fibers. Um, recovery capacity, it maybe takes longer for you to recover after intense exercise. Um, you, as you're, as you get older, you, you have the accumulation of your life, whether somebody has chronic conditions or medications or otherwise, right? Like you're the sum of all of your choices from decades past, right? Um, and sarcopenia, uh, you know, this, this muscle loss, this is once thought to be like this aggressive and inevitable part of aging. Um, it's not entirely unavoidable uh, from my perspective, but I think that individuals use age as a scapegoat for their shitty, shitty, shitty choices. Um, it, they're, oh, it's age. It's that age, that age is getting you. Um, you know, let's, let's talk about the last 30 or 40 years, right? Uh, the sarcopenia can be combated with regular resistance and strength training, you know, 
and I'd have to take a look at the studies again, but there's a, a really wide range, 0 0.07 to 8% muscle loss per decade after 30, okay? You go on the low end of, imagine amazing practices, you know, you're eating rhythmically, you're eating a balanced diet, you get good sleep, uh, you've got low stress, um, your resistant training a couple days a week, two to three days a week, right? That that can be, you know, and genetics does have something to do with that, but still doesn't doesn't account for more than, you know, uh, 20% or so, maybe, maybe a little bit more. We'll talk about that later. But 0.07% of that could be one pound uh, a year, or sorry, a decade after 30. So up to 60, and then it can like, it can accelerate after after 60, right? But you're looking at like not a ton of, of muscle mass loss there. So I think, again, I hate to hear people say like, oh, it's, it's age, it's age, you know? Um, yeah, if your car is well-maintained and it's stored properly, or do you treat it like you're in a demolition derby, right? Um, other things, other considerations that go into building muscle, you know, uh, what kind of strength are you looking for? Are you looking for functional strength? Are we going to do this pattern based? Is there something that you can't do in your life that you really want to be able to do uh, to build strength or muscle for? Um, or do you just want to pack on pure muscle in particular areas? I want my quads, my butt. I want to get a dump truck. Okay. Um, you know, so those are all things to consider that your goals, what you want matter. Your expectations and intentions matter. If I had two people identical and one person's doing curls and they're focused, they are zoned in, they're thinking about it, they're they're concentrating on squeezing the muscle and then extending the arm, they're, they're focusing internally in that. And then I have another person that's like doing curls and is like, oh, I'm going to go home and eat tacos after this, right? Um, not paying attention at all. The person who's really zoning in and has the intention they really want to build muscle will most likely build muscle better and faster. So, so the intentions do matter and matter with consistency. That person is more likely to be consistent because their intentions are true with that. Um, yeah. Training frequency is, is a consideration here. How often can you train? How long can you train in the day? And also how well can you recover from that training session will dictate how frequently you should train uh balance you know uh is is something to consider in muscle building so the volume the density the intensity that you can handle that stimulates muscle growth without leading to burnout and injury so that's always a fine fine balance between individuals that are really trying to push it and then genetics if somebody wants to get really big, I'll say, well, how big are your parents? You know, what do your parents look like? Are they big? Uh, do they have troubles building muscle, right? So that might give you a good idea of, you know, what is that potential that you have? Um, yeah, supporting, let's go ahead and go down to the next one. What supports muscle building? Okay. I feel like this is more of the, like the practical advice uh, for individuals. Okay, we'll get into like the training side of things, but one is adequate protein intake. Uh, depends a lot on your lean body mass and your digestion and what you're currently at and your training. So one gram uh, on up per pound of lean body mass is a good place to start. I think you've heard a lot of other things, but if I have somebody whose digestion is just wrecked, what I'm not going to do is ramp them up to two grams per pound of body weight, right? You want to progress that up and you just watch and make sure muscles, you know, being recovered from there and, and grown. Um, and also training. If somebody two days a week really may not need to have excessive protein. Okay. Uh, caloric surplus. Generally, you need to take in enough most likely a slight surplus so that your body has enough resources to pull from to build muscle. Three, protein isn't the only thing that matters. Carbs and fats do matter when you're, you're doing this and, you know, micronutrients as well too. I think we say like carbs. So, and 
fats and protein. And very often people think, okay, chicken and rice and veggies and butter and that kind of stuff. But like you need a variety of micronutrients to get some, some good quality out of that. Uh, rest and recovery, sleep, sleep, sleep as much as you can without getting fired from your job or divorced. Uh, hydration, one ounce per pound of body weight. Um, did it? No. Yeah, sorry, 0. 0.5. But I don't know why I said one ounce. That's that's excessive. So <laughs> again, that's also, side note, a problem I have against like blanket prescriptions like the 75 hard where like drink a gallon. Well, if you're hyper hydrating all day and you're just constantly flushing water out of yourself, you may be uh, causing more problems with electrolytes and, and what have you than, than you're... Uh, then you're fixing, right? So if you're, if you only need to be taking in 80 to 90 ounces of water and you're just, you're slamming 128 ounces, it could be a problem. But again, 0.5 to 0.6 ounces per pound of body weight is a good place to start. Uh, consistency. Muscle building is a slow process. Your expectations that I men mentioned earlier, uh, a pound a week is not <laughs> a good expectation. Um, and this, this pound a month, maybe, uh, depending very wildly against, you know, who you are and what you're doing in the stage of life that you're in. And you notice at the very end, there's like supplements, right? I think very often people flip a lot of these things and supplements, like what supplements should I be taking? Well, if you're not sleeping enough and you're not eating enough food and you're not, you know, drinking enough water, why are we even having the conversation about supplements? Like you're stepping over hundred dollar bills to pick up nickels. And with that being said, there is some place for whey protein and creatine and BCAAs and, and things like that. I think whey protein and creatine most likely are like the two most proven in this area as well. Um, and if you have for certain clients who have a diet that's like omitting certain things like vegan, vegetarian, keto, carnivore, uh, if you are omitting like major food groups, then supplementation may be more relevant than less for you. So how does X affect muscle growth? Um, this is something that I do want to like jam this point home with individuals who are training with the intention of building muscle and they're just like i don't know i don't know why i'm not building muscle but they're super stressed and strung out at work uh or they're sporadic with the amount of protein or they're not eating any vegetables or so on and so forth so we'll go ahead and go down this list um stress stress releases cortisol it can lead to protein breakdown in the muscles. It can mess with testosterone and growth hormone. It can mess with sleep and eating habits and energy and motivation. Uh, if you're super duper stressed out all the time, don't expect uh, to build a lot of muscle or at least again, expect that it's going to be harder to do. Uh, protein uh, slash amino acids, having a pull, full amino acid profile. So like you have these, um, amino acids and protein, and if you don't have the full profile, your body may struggle to construct and repair tissue effectively, which is something that I do. I struggle with, with, um, individuals who omit, um, animal proteins and things like that is that they, they will very often have to supplement with, uh, some amino acids to, to kind of complete that profile. Um, how do micronutrients affect muscle growth? Well, vitamins and minerals are involved in a ton of bodily functions that both directly and indirectly support muscle growth and overall health. So vitamins like B complex for energy production, they help fuel workouts effectively, uh, which means that if you're not fueling your workout effectively, you're going to get kind of dampened. You're not going to be able to express as much, meaning you're not going to get the mechanical tension or the breakdown that you want. So you're going to have issues with that. Um, magnesium, zinc, iron, uh, important for muscle function, recovery, oxygen transport, um, calcium and vitamin D, uh, antioxidants like C and E uh, for like oxidative stress, inflammation. You know, there's, there's, like I said, there's a lot of things that if you're missing some of this, then you're going to have some issues. 
uh, carbs. It's essentially the primary fuel source for like higher intensity workout and intensity is, you know, I guess you could define that as load and volume, right? Um, you know, just hitting heavy weights and then like volume, just creating stress, right? In this context for me, when, when you eat carbs, they're broken into glucose, it's stored in the muscle uh, and liver as glycogen. And then it's used for energy to hit head those heavier weights and then restoring those levels after help with repair. And it can stimulate the release of insulin. And, uh, you know, it's a hormone that transports nutrients in the cells. So important if you are omitting carbs and you are doing keto or you're doing carnivore and you're omitting all of those, you'll probably, again, uh, that's a, maybe that's a, another Facebook live about dietary stuff where individuals will go keto and it'll work and it'll work uh, for a little while until it won't. And then it'll cause some issues sometimes very often. Um, fat affecting muscle growth. Uh, fat is a, it can be a source of energy for like longer and moderate intensity exercise. So like dietary fats uh, do play a role in like the production of hormones, uh, testosterone, growth hormone. Um, and they're important, again, back to the micronutrients of like fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, and that contribute to health and muscle function as well. Uh, sleep. Sleep is when growth hormone is released in higher quantities, which helps tissue growth and repair. If you... If you're not sleeping enough and you're trying to build muscle, just knock it off, knock it off. Uh, you know, maybe I should have put this one at the top, but it's super important, it helps manage cortisol. Bad sleep can mess with hunger hormones like ghrelin and leptin. It's just, just, just knock it off. Change your goals then if, you, if you're not willing to sleep enough. Uh, water intake. I, I have a lot of adults that just have issues with water intake and struggling with it. And that's, you know, no problem with that, but you're going to have issues with nutrient transport into the muscles, uh, facilitating proteins and other growth promoting, promoting nutrients, uh, you know, into the muscles. So it also helps maintain electrolyte balance, which is important for muscle contractions and muscle function. So I'll see individuals like that who come in dehydrated, who may have their electrolytes off who just, they're like, I can I just couldn't hit it today. So we're, if we're trying to create mechanical tension week by week and add weight, add weight, and you just, I just couldn't lift it. Well, could be that you're just not drinking enough water, or eating enough salt, right? Um, yeah. I mean, dehydration, even in small amounts can impair your training session and slow down recovery. So, uh, and then excessive sugar intake. Uh, you know, what is excessive can depend on a lot of things, but we're talking like, Hey, I eat a lot of refined sugar multiple times a week, right? This is one way to keep an eye on how your body would react to that would be to get a CGM, like a continuous glucose monitor as well. But glucose spikes and crashes, you know, negatively impact muscle protein synthesis, um, carrying excessive fat due to that can help lead to hormonal imbalances. Um, over time, reduced insulin sensitivity can impair the body's ability to like shuttle the glucose into the muscle cells and you have inflammation, dehydration, all kinds of things that come along with that. So what the intention of this is to weave all of this together. I know I didn't have sugar on this slide, uh, but I added it in the, at the end as well too. And if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to post and, and we can talk about how other things might affect it as well. Let's talk about the training side of things, okay? I think we're making pretty good time here. Um, novice, right? Novice, intermediate, advanced. Uh, this isn't just I've been in a gym. This is I've been progressively training for X amount of time, right? Um, you know, even if I've had people come in and I run assessments, individually programming for them. And they're like, oh, I've been training for eight years then. Okay. Let's do some assessments to make sure that, because what do you mean? You had two years off and then two years on where you kind of like train one time a week or two times and it was sporadic at best. And so you actually might even still be a novice and you'd gain a lot from going back through something like this, you know, developing motor control and muscle endurance. You're learning to move well develop efficiency and movement patterns, stability, 
control and the eccentric, this, uh, this lengthening of the muscle, the lowering of things, right? That's a good way of putting it. And then strength in the concentric, okay? Uh, you're building volume here with a base of quality reps at lower intensities. Novices, because their central nervous system can't light up a lot, uh, can get away with FBR, full body resistance, a few days a week. So you notice we have a squat and a pull and a bend and a push and some core work. So three seconds for those of you who haven't gotten into tempo too much, like three seconds down, one second pause at the bottom, one up. The one up on a one on a concentric is typically just like just move, uh, as opposed to X, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you can look at this like three, four, five, six, do the math. That's 60 seconds of time under tension. That's a lot. I I don't like to program a ton. And once you get to the intermediate and advanced stages, I'll start removing uh, tempo, but novices, I do like to throw in tempo and it really has a lot of training application. Uh, prone row, and then we'll do that by three sets with a, an adequate rest in there, and then a dumbbell Romanian deadlift, then a dumbbell bench press, and you get the idea here, right? As you get a lot of sessions under your belt, and you're hitting some reasonable wet, weights, and uh, your movement looks solid, then we, you know, after a while, you become an intermediate. In intermediate, now your central nervous system can light up a bit more, so you can express more, meaning you need longer time to recover between sessions. Now we're talking about muscle growth. So in muscle growth, recovery between sessions matters less than strength. Remember for strength, it's recovery, recovery, recovery. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure that you're, you're really recovered for uh, hypertrophy work for muscle growth. You typically like you want to recover the muscle enough, but sometimes, you know, two back to back sessions for the right person at the right time uh, to really break down muscle might be the right thing to do. So you just have to consider this as you go into it. Now, now that they're an intermediate, you've unlocked some more variety and you've unlocked more tools that you can use and drop sets and giant sets and tri sets and um, cluster sets, all kinds of other odds and ends, things that you can start to play with, you know, you, you, but you need to start getting into splits, right? Um, you can still do an FBR, a full body resistance with this person, but this is splits, right? So a bend, or actually this would be an upper, this upper lower, uh, or a bend push squat pull, right? Because we get a few days in between this but close grip bench press. Now the eccentrics, the two down, one, 1,002, it's a, it's, I would say it's less relevant, but it's, it's less time under tension. Um, zero at the bottom X indicates the intent to move fast. X means this person, when I see them bench, boom, it goes straight up. It doesn't wobble all over the place, right? So two down, zero at the bottom, fast up, one at the top to kind of regain that, that tension. For 10 reps, you're about 40 seconds or so of time under tension here. Uh, then a pen lay row and then enough rest for them to recover uh, by four sets. And then we go into more push and pull. So concentration curl. Now we've got metabolic stress here. Whereas back here, you'll notice for the novice, this is all like motor control and muscle endurance work. You know, they need to earn this to actually get to the point where they have enough mechanical tension. So they're, they're training mechanical tension. Uh, they are most likely getting some muscle breakdown, but you need to be strong enough to break down muscle. So keep that in mind. Uh, but you still can play with some of those traits on there. But back to the intermediate, now we've got hypertrophy work and you've got metabolic stress in the B1, B2. Now you, I could have something a little different at the top, like, uh, you know, another thing really focused on mechanical tension at the top as well. But again, these people typically have higher levels of relative body strength, higher chronological age, training age, higher amount of accumulated reps, and they have more resilience here. Advanced. I've only got a few people that are truly advanced, right? Um, that means you've been training for a long time and you you've been you've been doing it progressively you know the principle of progressive overload okay uh but maybe you hit a deadlift heavy five heavy five a little heavier three three rest two three minutes in between those 
Then you do a dumbbell, you notice a hinge pattern again for a hypertrophy range. And then maybe you do some metabolic stress on that same pattern again. And we've got some glute work and hamstring curl work right there. Uh, but you can do the full spectrum. You could do FBR with this person. You could do splits. You can do an isolated split like this. But this is to show the extreme example that a novice shouldn't be doing what's above them without really, really good reason. Okay. Um, but yeah. Yeah, higher levels of nervous system work. So you have to understand that this person can express stuff. And, um, you know, the the same workout for this person and a new person would result in a different dose response there. And you've got a lot more variety and tools to play with with this person. Okay, here we go. So if you are a novice or an intermediate or an advanced, you have a good idea of where to go, go in that direction. Now, looking at some of these other things, right? Like I, I, you know, trying to think of what would be relevant for people, I would say that if you get anything out of this and you're trying to build muscle, going back through saying, oh gosh, I'm not training the way I should be training to build muscle. Okay. Um, I'm not living the way I should be living if my intention was to build muscle. Okay. So that's, that's the intention there. And, you know, if you have questions, uh, if you're having trouble building muscle, um, hit us up, Brandon at crossfitsouthbend.com. Hit me up on Facebook. You can direct message me there. Um, if you're in the gym, you can walk straight up to me, but that's, you know, for those individuals, we do have group design, but we also write individual programs. And this is why we started writing individual programs. Whereas when you write one program for many, many people, when you have novices and intermediate and advanced, sometimes it just doesn't land for one person like it would for another. So if I have someone, it's like, man, I really would love to build muscle. I want to, I'd like, I'd like to pack it on and I'm willing to do what it takes. One, you can ask some of our individuals in the gym, uh, Keith, Shauna, uh, that it takes a long time and a lot of patience to, to develop that muscle um, in a lot of training. And yeah, just managing your expectations. And, you know, if you would like to learn more or talk about individual design or some kind of program written for you, then again, hit us up and that's it for the day. Have a good day, everyone.